Um, when was the last time you were out in Australia? Uh, around 2015, 16. Okay. Uh, one of those, <laughs> definitely. But um, yeah, I was out here with Mark Ronson. Cool. And Mark Ronson, how did you, I mean, what so, was the connection for that? <sighs> Weirdly enough, uh, <laughs> this, uh, I don't, I mean, of course someone had to suggest me and I'm not sure. I don't know if that was Adam or not. I don't, I still to this day, I don't know how he even heard my name, but um, he said he looked me up on YouTube and he's seen a clip of me at church. This is Mark, this is Mark Ronson. This is a conversation Seriously? he had during rehearsals, yeah. <laughs> this is a conversation Mark, me and Mark Ronson had. He's like, yeah, I looked you up on YouTube. Oh. Um, um, me playing at church, <laughs> literally. And he was like, oh yeah, that's the guy. I was like, oh wow. Like, I, if I look at the video, I think it's regular. <laughs> I think it's super regular, but he was like, man, that's the guy I want. And I was like, oh cool. Like, So he's, this is him telling me the story. And I'm like, wow, that's crazy. So again, I don't. I don't think he just automatically just came across me. So I, yeah, somebody probably, probably you know. Then you yeah, up. yeah. Then he looked me up. So yeah, that was that was a crazy story. You, <laughs> that's. I mean, you you, you kind of have to have some kind of online presence these days, exactly. right? You exactly. know, because people people aren't going to always going to be able to come and see you play or whatever, right. or just take somebody's recommendation at face value. They're going to go, oh, what's his name? Right. Plug it into right. YouTube or Google and find out. Right. Done. Yeah, yeah, that's why. That's why. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm inspired. <laughs> inspired by what you do, man. Uh, really. It's, uh, you know, it's, uh, it's the future, right? Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. But it's, it's such a great day and age that we can share, you know, share your story yeah, and, absolutely. and share knowledge and stuff like that and connect with people. Absolutely. In a great way. So, the, so the Mark Ronson thing was that just for Australia, or was that kind of a bit of a world so thing? We were rehearsing for. Um, Glastonbury? Glastonbury. We you, were, you play Glastonbury? Yeah, we, yeah, we play Glastonbury. Pyramid Fest. stage? Yeah, yeah. I think that's somewhere on YouTube too, <laughs> somewhere. But uh, um, we rehearsed two months for Glastonbury. Two months? Yeah, well, for all the festivals we were doing, but really, his, his wow. in his mind, it was Glastonbury. You know, he yeah. had to be the, you know, the right one. So we rehearsed two months. He moved me out there, got me an apartment. And, to um, the UK? Yeah, in London, yep. Yeah, we rehearsed, uh, you know. Had a was few it, days off. Was it a global band? No. Uh, oh no, me and the Horns. The Horns were American. I was mm-hmm. American. Everybody else was uh, British. Yeah, British. Yeah. Is this Uptown Funk era? Uptown Funk era. Right. Um, yeah, that that whole album. Right. Yeah, and a few of his old ones. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I didn't never I never got to meet uh, Bruno Bruno yet. Uh, okay. Bruno, Bruno didn't do any of the shows with us. Yeah. At at the time. Um, but, you know, we had Mary J. Blige, we had uh, George Clinton, you know, we had we had a few people that, you know, came, but uh, you had to get to meet uh, Bruno yet. <laughs> What's it like stepping out on stage <laughs> in Glastonbury? I mean, that's one, that's yeah. just an iconic it, gig. It was, it was amazing. <laughs> it was amazing, like, just, you know, I, I've always, like, looked up, you know, YouTube clips, <laughs> of course, yeah. of just, like, glasses and it's like, wow, this is nice. As a, as a musician, I wanted to play it. I wanted to play that one one year, so, you know, to get the call and uh, have the opportunity was amazing. Was it night nighttime or daytime? It was daytime into night. Our show yeah, literally nice. was like this and then turned, it That's was the best. by that last song. Because you get to see the, yeah. the sea of people. <laughs> it was crazy. And then the lights really kick in. It was crazy. It was amazing. And just, you know, by, after two months of rehearsal, it, was, it wasn't like I was nervous or anything. I was ready. Like, you know, it was, yeah, you know, it was nice. You should be. It was nice. <laughs> right. <Two> months, right. <laughs> right. But I mean, still, it's, it'd be very easy to be like when you get in that situation right. for just to lose your concentration right. or whatever. So right. you, you got to stay focused, right? Right. right. Yeah, yeah, that's important. That's one, one thing that I still struggle with is just, you know, staying in the moment and focusing on what they're doing, not yeah. being distracted by yeah. what the drummer's doing or right. who's in the front row, you know, right. whatever. Like, how, how do you kind of, what's your kind of gig brain? Man, I think we all go through it. I find myself, uh, you know, doing that exact same thing here, you know, sometimes. When it's time, I really to just lock in, yeah. yeah. I, it's just a lot, I think my body's just used, to, at this point, I guess it's just like a lock-in moment where, okay, it's time. Cool. Show time, you yeah. know? <laughs> Versus like, yeah. you know, lounging or playing at a jam, you know, it's a little different, but like, yeah, I guess you get your show time. Uh, did you have choreographed dance moves as well? I didn't, but uh, you know, I move anyway. Yeah. I, I, that's just part of Can I, happen. Yeah, like, so he he loved that. <laughs> he loved yeah. the fact that, I, you know, if I'm playing, I'm like, you know, that's, yeah, just, getting into it. that's just how I, yeah. 
and in years, I'm guessing. Yeah, in yeah. years, uh, track. Well, we didn't do everything with track, but we did a lot, most mostly with track. Some, like maybe two, one or two songs were like live too. Yeah, cool. It was nice. It was nice. Wow. I mean, we did um, came out here. Uh, we did Melbourne. Um, we did uh, Sydney. A few few spots out here. It was mm-hmm. nice. And like I said, the Triple J. And mm. yeah, we did two songs there. Uh, that was nice. It got a good. Uh, I'll try and put links for that in the description oh, of the, the yeah, video. Stuff. Check that out. Yeah. So was that a, like a cover and an original, or a cover and original? So we did um, one of the songs from his albums. I can't think of the song right now, but I, I will, like I said, we'll get the links. We'll get the links. And uh, we did a cover song, and his. Um, his version was uh, "Sap by the Ocean." We'll look it up. <laughs> but um, yeah, he did a Stevie uh, Wonder version of that song, oh. and I played Moog bass on it. Uh, uh, yeah, man, that was nice. It was nice. It, it was one of his arrangements. Yeah. 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 That well, I learned a lot with him, man. He's a very musical guy. Yeah. The very musical Definitely. guy, man. Like we'd be listening to I mean, James Brown. Any like, White House and Bruno Mars, like right? <laughs> right. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, he, he he would just play records for it. I was like, oh my gosh, we've never heard this record. What is yeah. that? Like, he introduced me to so many sides of music, and yeah, it was crazy. He kind of feels like he has a bit of that quest love thing, like he's a musicologist, right, you know? Right, yeah. You'd imagine he would just right. know who played on right. what record and what year and what venue right. and stuff like that. Yeah. I think that's why he's, he can span so many genres so authentically. Right. You know, I think I've seen him do like some New Orleans stuff as well. Um, yeah. Yeah, he's, he's phenomenal. Oh, no.